are brought to earth by woodcutters of the French Canadian Forestry Corps unit. These hardy lumberjacks of the 27th Company hail from Gaspé, Lac saint jean the Gatineau Valley, and the Acadian country. Every bite of their golden art and every down sweep of their axes is a blow to the Nazi. For such are the weapons handled by these specialists of the Canadian Army. The cat-drawn sockets are a strange contrast with the horse-drawn sledges used in the days of Maria Chapdelaine. The trimmed logs must now be reduced to a more convenient length for transportation. These brawny shantymen are experts at handling the cross-cut saw. The cut logs are taken to the sawmill and rolled into the pond where they wait to be fed to the buzz saws. No need here for the nimble-footed draveur accustomed to steering rafts on the swift waters of the Lièvre or on the Ottawa River. As the finished lumber comes out of the sawmill, it is taken to the woodyard and stacked in big piles, ready to be sent wherever it may be needed. Wood is required for the building of railroads, camps, barracks, fortifications, trenches, and bridges. This is indeed vital war work these French Canadian woodsmen are doing in the forests of Scotland. Recent visitors to Army headquarters were members of a British parliamentary party. They included Lord Marchwood and Air Commodore Lord Stansgate from the House of Lords and Sir Percy Hardy and Mr. R.C. Morrison representing the House of Commons. The occasion was an informal visit to General McNaughton before they left for Canada. The Canadian trip is being held under the auspices of the Empire Parliamentary Association, which arranges for British and Dominion statesmen to see for themselves how things are done in other parts of the British Commonwealth. And as they left for Ottawa, they knew at first hand of the readiness and eagerness for battle of Canada's fighting men. When the village church in South Mersham, Surrey was smashed in the air raids of April 41 and the vicar injured, a Canadian corporal in civil life and Anglican padre took on the parish in his spare time. Thanks to him, and thanks to a detachment of Canadian engineers, a new church arose beside the old one, built from the materials salvaged from the ruins. The padre, Captain George Wolfendale, now promoted from the ranks and in the Canadian chaplain service, and the engineers responsible, had reason to watch with pride the opening ceremonies performed by the Bishop of Southwark. Present were senior British and Canadian officers, the local branch of the British Legion, the ARP, and other members of the congregation. The Canadian Army itself has reason to look with pride on this small building, for it symbolizes the lasting comradeship of many units to many communities. It leaves in South Mersham a unique war memorial, built by Canadians of many denominations, a work of their hearts and their hands. The name of Canada will be remembered here, and we, too, will remember places like this whose joys and sorrows we shared in the Battle of Britain. Most infantry soldiers feel that parade ground smartness is an infantry specialty and regard engineers as the fellows who do the tough jobs involving science and technical skill. But the sappers are just as smart on parade as anyone else. In fact, this display of precision drill by a battalion of the Royal Canadian Engineers would put many an infantry unit to shame. Acting on a single word of command, the squad goes through a series of movements with perfect timing and steadiness.
This battalion is completely French-Canadian. Its personnel is drawn not only from the province of Quebec, but from every part of the Dominion. And their smartness on the parade square is a sure indication of their training and efficiency as an engineering unit. Victoria's campaign in Tunisia. It happened in the Gubelet Plain, where Sergeant Major L.A. Dumay of the FMR was attached to a British unit. Dumay suggested to the CO that, in view of the terrain, horses be used for patrol work instead of Bren carriers. The CO, who was a keen horseman, agreed to give it a try. The Colonel himself often led the patrol, and some of the riders were former jockeys and stable boys. And so this English regiment, acting on a Canadian suggestion, kept up the old tradition of fox hunting. Only this time the fox was human, the enemy. On the occasion of this particular raid, the objective was a small farm held by the enemy, and a British Army film unit cameraman went out with the patrol. The day of the horse is not dead, for in the midst of the great Tunisian triumph, the most mechanized campaign in history, this little action developed into a real old-fashioned cavalry charge. Colonel Glimp would have rejoiced to see it. And when the action was over, the cavalry charge had done its job well. The Germans were forced to abandon the farm, leaving behind them a fair amount of booty. Sergeant Major Dumay, the originator of the mounted patrol idea, is a veteran of Dieppe, where he won the military medal. Good hunting, Sergeant Major. <laughs> to historic Edinburgh Castle on its high rock, go each month to study under veteran Pipe Major Ross three or four Canadian pipers. They see the sights like Mons Meg, the old cannon, and hear stories of the old pipes and souvenirs that hang on the walls in the school itself. This old set of pipes at one time belonged to the late Earl of Early, and he presented them to the Scots Guards. I carried them all the way through the Boer War. Eventually they were handed over to me to keep them as a present. They brush up on their fingering with the practice chanters, bagpipes without bags or drones. Each man plays his own music in his own time. It's every man for himself. But make no mistake, this is no matter for jest by mere Sachinax. Canadian and Scottish pipers studying the classic music of the pipes together within the hallowed walls of Edinburgh Castle cement a proud brotherhood. And the tune they play on the battlements close to Scotland's shrine and memorial to her fallen in the last war will be heard again as they play their Canadian and Scottish comrades into victorious action and into immortal history in the battles to come. Mm -hmm. 